Oh, this is a boring video. <laughs> We're not talking at all. All right. Are those people or pillars? Uh, Sim Builder? And you I, are? The Maze Man. The Maze Man, all right. And you are? Lego Lego Man. Lego Lego Man. Lego Man. Lego Man. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. So we had Tyler on build us a jet. And he's going to show us what we've come up with to fix this. So he fires it up. And now you can see the level. It is huge. And what's important to note is all the terrain, every little piece is individual parts. So each of these parts you can fly over, you can fly through, you can collide with it in physics. And more importantly, during the game, you can destroy it. So we can drop bombs, break bombs, throw up parts. We also made a death laser, so you can see we can carve holes straight through the terrain. That's awesome. Telemont shows us the other side. And now I think he's going to come up to this hole and see if he can fly through. And you can see all those individual parts bouncing in there, colliding. But he doesn't make it. So he gets out, but here he'll really show you how big this terrain is when you walk through it. So it's, it's much more massive, like you can fit that much. levels that are created in Roblox now in that hole. And to give you an example, as he flies over to a corner, in this one small corner of the terrain is Crossroads. So this whole expanse actually can fit 16 Crossroads inside of it. So that, that's the solution. You have a couple of options, and when you generate it, it actually generates most of the terrain. It takes it a while because it actually generated millions of blocks. And as you can see, the terrain is smooth. It's not just blocky. We insert special types of blocks called wedges that are designed so they connect with each other. So the resulting terrain feels really smooth. Now, if you start tweaking these parameters, you'll get very different type of material. Now we're making it more killer. So you see, the terrain is very different. Here you can still walk up all of the hills with just the character, because they're smooth, so what you have to do and you to get across. But you can push it. If you change amplitude and frequency to the max, it will get some real moments. So you see, these things are like nowhere close to the hilly terrain that we had before. We see a lot of dirt, it's not always grassy, and for this kind of terrain, you can't just easily walk across it. You need some kind of wheels or, or planes to get out of it. And you can build a game around it, because all of this you can edit in real time. So once you've got your basic terrain, you can micro edit and make it exactly what, what, what you want in the game. And you have a bunch of tools for that. So the easiest one is just creating blocks and see as you create blocks, we're smoothing them automatically for you. So you can just do any form that you like and we'll make it look good. And obviously, not only can you create blocks, you can remove blocks and smoothing will, will be applied automatically. And since it's only the blocks, you can destroy as many of them as you like and build underground caves and tunnels. Now, after this, we have some global scale tools. So for example, this one elevates a lot of terrain in just one click. And those tools, they come with a special uh, slider, so you can make the effect larger. For example, now we're elevating a huge amount of terrain. You can make plateaus. Again, this takes a while because they work on so many blocks. But it's super easy to create a flat surface. You can make craters. And you can adjust the size of the crater and depth of the crater as well. So for example, now we're going to make a really big one. This is like instantly making a crater the size of those holes. 
can have the opposite. You can make the spur that steers on top of the terrain. And you control them as well with like how big they are, how much they elevate. So with this, you can make a very cool terrain level in just no time. Now, so what you can do with this, what, you, what kind of games you can create with this. Of course you can do mining games, which are pretty popular with Roblox. Uh, you can do awesome flight scenes like the one that we showed you, but better, like multiple drawbridge. And probably my favorite one is this space kit that we have. You can build a space station. And it's really fun. Uh, but more than Stamper parts, what we're, what we're really seeing in action in these videos is the Stamper tool. The Stamper tool is what brings all of this together. So it brings together, uh, what is the Stamper tool? Well, it's, it's what we use to click and to insert all these Stamper parts really fast. So the Stamper tool works with the Stamper parts. We've got a huge variety of Stamper parts already, and there's going to be more to come. And it also works with the terrain. Now, you guys just saw the talk before this one, Simon, talking about the terrain service that we have. And the Stamper tool is going to work with that. So you can build really fast to these grassy hills. It'll have this cool auto wedging feature. So you can build smooth grassy hills really fast. And more than that, eventually the Stamper tool is going to work with vehicles. So you won't have to like, walk all the way back to your regen spot if your Jeep flips over. You can just stamp another vehicle in there. And probably my favorite is in the future, you'll be able to stamp NPCs. So these are your non-player characters. So you'll be able to stamp if you're building a farm, for example. You can stamp a couple cows in there and then they'll start walking around. Or you can stamp like some zombies to eat the cows, which would be cool. Or you can stamp robot guards to guard your cows against your zombies. I don't know. I think it would be fun. So a lot of you guys are... So, as mentioned before, Proso servers focus on group building, which equals teamwork, which means building things much quicker, and you can find creativity from all your... I don't know what it's called on top. Barricade or... Battle Mats, Battle Mats. Yeah, very easy. And before you know it, you have the whole thing done. And how long is this? It's only been, what, less than a minute? And this whole thing's almost done. Almost there, everyone. You are done. You sit down there, and you are literally on top of the world. All right, so you guys must be wondering now, how do I make a personal server? It's very easy. It's that you are all probably familiar with already. When this feature will be released, you will have two buttons on top. Make sure to select the one that says create personal server. You will be taken to the create new place page. It is very similar to the one that you see today. The only difference now is that you can choose personal server or game place. Personal server will be chosen by default. Please remember that after you've chosen and created your personal server, you can actually switch it back to a game place very easily. Another thing that is added to this page when you are building a personal server is the access and privileges section. Here you can add your friends to different access levels. Very easy. Let's say you want to add your friends to add them. Um, so you just go to the teleport station, press yes to, to confirm your teleportation, and you are in new game. In this particular case, it's crossroad. You can do whatever you usually do in there, like run around, play a little bit, do anything you want, and then, for example, you can take another teleport spot. As you notice, we fetch preview of the place you are going, so you can see where you're going to. And after you're done, you can play another game. So basically, you can play a bunch of games without leaving a game at all. You don't need to go to the website to play those games. So, how teleports can be used right now? Uh, one way, most simple one, you just grab free model from Roblox or any other teleport model. But, of course, we need to improve this. So, how do we increase the server performance? Two-part question. The implicit 
question be, why aren't I online more? Um, <laughs> so, I, I am online like eight hours a day because this is a full-time job for me. Um, but I don't play Roblox all eight hours every day because otherwise they would probably fire me. Uh, <laughs> the, the reason I put that badge in there is sort of like a little scam because I want users to rush at me with a normal sword because it's really ineffective. So I'm kind of like daring them to do it. So it's like a challenge. Yeah, I have about um, 100 alternative accounts, and in fact, in our early years, I was maybe half of our users. Good morale building, John. That was wise. Very smart. Okay, so on this slide, Max is going to be reasonably wise. Yes, yes, that's, that's a good one. And favorite board game? I've been playing mine for like almost two. So even if you've only been playing for half a year, you're still probably have been playing for longer than half of our users. Well, we've been playing since 2006. Oh man, so have I. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop playing. It's good. Good mod. Okay, I remember. Thank you. I've been playing for five of I've been playing for five of them. I've been playing for Oh yeah? I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Yep. This is day 13. Day 13. It's still going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, great. Oh, we're live. Oh, yes. We're going to be live on, the, <laughs> uh, on YouTube. Ah, exactly. Ah, woo. Yeah, we're like 500. Really? 500? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I would say it's a really great idea. Um, I can't say like where we would have it. There's a benefit, yeah. of course, to having it where we all live. I know you guys have right. so far. So, yeah. So, definitely a great idea to have another one. I, I don't know if I could bomb at the thing on like so, I enjoy kind of watching you. I think I watch you. You guys have fun like road trips, you know? Yeah. Thanks yeah. for taking it. You're welcome. Yeah. It was it was this guy's idea. 